Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday, 6 a.m., March 5th. Price of Bitcoin currently at 9093 Man, we took a big, big move to the upside uh, just overnight, right? So, um, you know, things are looking good for Bitcoin. I'd like to discuss uh, the things on my mind of price targets, exactly where we could see more bullish upside, uh, and, you know, maybe some long or short opportunities, okay? Again, folks, if you are not part of the CryptoSomniac Advantage community, go to CryptoSomniac.com, all right, over here, and hit the products page right there, okay, and then join the Advantage membership right there, all right? Uh, with the Advantage membership, as you already know, uh, we have leverage trading channels like this, and as you can see, we went long last night. Um, we also took some profit around 89.69, and I'll tell you exactly why. Uh, we have other trading channels like the scalp high leverage channels. We have swing trading low leverage channel. We have uh, altcoin leverage trades, um, you know, spot buy positions that I typically pick up here and there. And then Bitcoin analysis. This is where people really enjoy um, the, the value that I provide for CryptoSomniac through this channel right here because I provide multiple updates every single day, okay? Every single day uh, with, you know, multiple videos through the day right here, okay? And so every evening, you know, just like you're seeing this video right now, I have an evening analysis and I update people on exactly what's going on in the markets. Even sometimes I pull up the traditional markets, explain how the futures could be impacting the current markets and how the traditional markets could have influence on the crypto markets, et cetera. Okay. But anyway, as you can see, you know, tons of updates. Um, I even go through Exo charts, which is a L3 data platform. Uh, it basically, you know, goes, digs into, um, uh, the details of, you know, bids and asks, um, on each specific level, as you can see like that. So again, if you're not familiar with that, um, I can, you know, explain it through my analysis. Um, whenever I put it up, I do it with my videos whenever I have evening analysis or morning analysis to my Advantage members. Um, so I never just say that I'm doing this and that without any explanation, okay? So the one thing that you'll learn at least in my community is transparency, no bullshit, and me explaining to you everything that goes through my mind, which is you know, my thought process when I'm trading. Because folks, I'm trading for a living, okay? Which is you know, not what most people could say. A lot of people on crypto Twitter are just keyboard warriors where they're just typing that this is going to go this high and that high. And I'm actually showing you that I am taking these positions as I tell you. Okay. So if you see on the CryptoSomniac Twitter, I even told you guys what I was looking at uh, when this formation was happening right here, right? This whole thing was happening and we were at 87.24 down here. And I said, hey, I see you know, maybe a inverse head and shoulders, maybe a broadening wedge. But what we need to do is obviously hold the black box, which is this black box over here, all right? Actually, let me show you the chart that I had. This uh, black box right here, okay? So that was critical for us to hold because that was a key, you know, SR, you know, pivot level, all right? You can clearly see over here, it was support. Over here, it was support before it smashed through. Then it used it as resistance, resistance, resistance. Again, resistance came back around support and support, right? And so the point is that once we kind of use that as support, we blasted through this descending trend line, flagged, and then broke up through, okay? So basically, you know, the question now is, are, are we done over here or are we going to go higher, right? So let's look at some key levels that are available to us, okay? Number one, you can see this was the base of this formation right here before this big drop down. Okay, so it makes sense that price is going to try to come back towards this area and retest it as resistance. Now, does it mean that uh, was there's a fall down? Not necessarily, right? But a typical rule of thumb is when something was previous support, it will more often than not be resistance on the other way around. Unless, you know, somehow price just has a thousand dollar rocket candle and then nothing matters anyway technicals are not going to help you anyway right but in this particular case all of this was actually quite easily identifiable right we saw a descending broadening wedge which are bullish patterns we saw a potential inverse head and shoulders which is a potential bullish pattern um we also saw 
over here, this, this base holding, you know, so the technical factors were there to let you know what exactly we're looking at, right? And so if you went along with us in our advantage side, I mean, you were sitting pretty. You obviously didn't catch this move because this was the big target for me, right? Why? Because this was a key SR level. You could see right there, that was the high, that was the high, and then this was the high, and that's where I sold. Okay, I sold exactly at this level, okay? Um, and then after that, obviously, all of this just happened overnight, um, and I wasn't able to watch out for this flag being created. If I was awake, honestly, I'd, you know, uh, position myself to buy this flag and buy, you know, basically sell this breakout right here. Um, but, but that's okay. You can never be up 24 seven just to be trading, right? What you guys need to realize that if you want to be in this game long enough, you need to treat this as a marathon, not as a sprint. Okay. Every single day when you are in the markets, you are essentially trade training for a marathon, right? And if you're trading like me, you are already running the marathon. Okay, so capital preservation is the number one rule of the game. Uh, number two is you have to be able to understand uh, how to manage your risk, set stops properly, be able to take profit, not get too greedy in your positions, right? So again, all these things we teach in the uh, CryptoSomniac Advantage community. So I hope you guys come join. Click the uh, Discord link below in the YouTube description, folks. And um, you know, you can uh, come join and trade with us. Okay. So let's keep moving. Right. So what we see basically folks is if we start using this area as a mini trading range before this big sell off happened, right. So let's do it like this. Right. So we're over here like that. Okay. So that's really the trading range right there that we had. Right. We had this trading range right here before the sell off. Okay. So we call this area right here, the point of breakdown. Okay, so when we when we have the point of breakdown right there, um, chances are, you know, the price is going to try to reach towards that. And if there's really bears ready to step up, they'll basically crush this price down. Okay, this is really the area that you want to see the bears stepping up. Okay, I personally think that if you take this first X, which means that uh, remember, if you have a consolidation period created folks like this, that means there were short positions being loaded in this area and also longs, right? Um, that means both sides have their positions open here. Um, and so that means that shorts, if they had bought in right here and they didn't close out their profits anywhere down here, they have their stops sitting right there, right? Um, and then same thing with longs, right? If people were long right here and they were bleeding for the last seven days, more than likely they're going to want to close out of their position as price gets to that area. Why? Because that is just human psychology. Okay. When people are um, bleeding in their positions for multiple days, weeks, all they really want to do is when price comes back to break even, they just want to get out. Right? So what that tells us is in this particular area, okay, you have resistance you know, depending on, um, the long positions that are ready to get out. And then also um, shorts, we're trying to defend this area because remember, if you're short right here, you want to make sure that price does not cross this level, right? So what are you going to do? You're probably going to add more sell walls. You're going to try to reshort or you're going to try to sell, you know, spot BTC. So this thing tanks. And this is again, not just a average retailer like you or me, these are, you know, professionals and bots and algorithms, right? If they're truly defending their position or want to defend their position, they would say that we need to defend this area. Why? Because if this area gets short squeezed, that means this area is susceptible up here around 94 or 25. And if that gets short squeezed, that means this area is susceptible right here around 98 or sorry, 96.83. And if that gets short squeezed, that means this area is susceptible. That's 98.81. So you can see it's, it's like a domino effect, right? Once you sort of push prices higher and higher, um, basically you collect short liquidity, meaning that when shorts cover, meaning when they close, they basically have to buy along on the other side, right? To close their short. So they basically add fuel to the fire of a movement once the short squeeze starts. And that's why you see when short squeezes happen, folks, they look something like this, okay? I'll show you guys exactly how that looks. Remember last year in October when we had this um, 
or was it this China Xi pump right there? So this is the definition of a short squeeze, right? What you basically do is number one, you trap uh, late shorters to the downside. And number two, you just aggressively pump price, okay? Um, not only do you aggressively pump price, but everyone who is shorting here and even down here, they have to cover, meaning they have to close their positions or basically get liquidated. And those liquidations fuel this movement right here. And that's why you get these multi-thousand dollar moves within a day. Okay, this is very common in you know, most markets. Um, when people are aggressively overexposed to one side, one direction, the price goes to the other side and exploits them. Okay, so what I could potentially see is, you know, obviously we have to see how this area is going to react. And so this particular area, right? So like I said, if we draw a parallel channel right there, okay? So we're between the prices of 9,100 to about 92.60, let's just say, okay? So between that $150 area, $160 area, you want to see the bears stepping up and not allowing price to push higher, right? It should create this kind of formation and this should break back inside this area right here and start selling off, okay? That is what you see, or that is what you want to see if the bears are truly going to defend their position. If not, this is going to get taken quickly and then we'll quickly accelerate higher and higher. So what are my next bigger targets? So number one, right? We have to look at this from uh, the daily perspective to understand where the larger resistance levels sit. Number one, we have to look at the yearly VWAP, okay, volume weighted average price, right? This is one of the most important factors that even you know, professionals trade off of, okay? Uh, the, the VWAP helps you understand basically, you know, as per volume, what is the price that, you know, uh, Bitcoin or this particular asset should be. Right. So right now it's at about ninety one hundred dollars or so, nine thousand seventy or something. OK, so if that's the case, right, you can see we use the VWAP all the way up as support right? over here, support over here, support. And so now if we hit it, this should be resistance. Right. It should be. It doesn't mean it has to be, but it should be. OK, so that means that over here, this might be the top. OK, but you need to see the reaction on a daily time frame. You want to see how this daily candle closes. If this daily candle closes, say, above the VWAP, that means the chances are higher um, that it could you know, push um, even higher. OK, and then number two, you see that we actually used the 200 moving average right there as support on these two red candles. So that's another positive sign, right, that we are pushing up higher. So you have a few positives and a few negatives. OK, here's the 200 EMA right there. Okay, and historically the EMA as well has um, kind of been utilized as a key SR moving average for Bitcoin. And you can see the EMA 200 is hitting Bitcoin right now. So the VWAP is hitting Bitcoin, the 200 EMA is hitting Bitcoin at current price action. So a couple of different reasons why you could say that, hey, maybe this could be the top, okay? Personally, I don't know if the momentum is done yet. You also haven't, seen any real signs of weakness uh, we just broke out of a pennant right so you want to see the reaction up here of hey does this look like it's going to just continue up i mean so far it looks pretty good you know it looks good to me right but we have to see and not underestimate the bears that are sitting trying to defend remember this key area the point of breakdown where they have their short stop sitting here because remember the bears also realize that hey if we get stopped out over here man, this could be a big sort of cascading effect where this gets pushed into this and then into this and then into this, okay? So um, watch, that, watch that area carefully, all right? Now, another way to look at this is uh, we can start pulling up pivots, right? If you're a pivot trader, okay? So you can see four-hour prices above the pivot, okay? Hasn't closed yet. We still got about 45 minutes left. Crazier things have happened in 45 minutes, so, you know, be careful and don't write off Bitcoin just yet, right? Um, and even daily chart, okay? The daily chart has a pivot right there around 91.69, okay? Now, here's the thing about um, the pivot, okay? So, remember that this key area, actually, if we go over here, it might be a little bit more visible. Um, 
let me see here. So remember that this key area right here, right there, this was the key base that was formed before we took off, right? And so we're smashing into that base right now, okay? Let me see if I can um, draw a box for you guys to see. So this key area right here, as you can see, that's the area where we consolidated right here <clears throat> in the uh, beginning of February, and then we took off, right? And so we're hitting that key area again. Again, if this was previous support, right, and then we blast it off, okay, that means this is going to be resistance on the other side around once price broke down and is now coming into that area, okay? So you want to be careful because this is a key area where, like I said, if you just wait and see the reaction of price action around this trading range right here, um, you, you'll basically be able to determine that if we're going to push higher and maybe cause a short squeeze going all the way up, or if we're just going to collapse down from here, okay? So if you're looking for short positions, you know, this is the way I would position or, or I would look for um, uh, short trades, okay? So number one, obviously you can short now, right? And you can place your stop above this area if you really think that this is the top. Number two, you can kind of wait for a little bit of confirmation. What you want to see is this thing rounding about, coming back inside this area, testing this as resistance, and then starting to sell off. And then your stop would be here. And you'd basically ride this down to this black box, which is around 8,700 or even lower around $8,500 or so. Okay. That is how I would essentially look for potential shorts. All right. Now, if I'm looking for long positions, um, you know, I'm thinking that as per, as per Elliott wave counts, you know, this could be, let me see here. I think this could be the end of the correction. This is the start of your impulse. So this could be a one, two, this could be a three, four, and this could be your potential five. Okay. And this could be part of a larger, you know, wave one, right? So this could be your wave one of this one, two, three, four, five. And then you might have a pullback to wave two around this area, which is the top of this consolidation, right? And then wave three could push us, you know, maybe 93, $9,400, wave four quick. And then wave five could end at around 95, 9,600 bucks. Okay. Um, 95, $9,600 is my big area that I'm watching for a key um, SR level. Okay. And I'll show you why. So remember this blue box that I talked about in a few videos uh, or a few weeks ago. Um, this comes back from way over here in June, 2019. Okay. You can see, you know, obviously it was resistance right there and there was support, 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 support before it broke down, used it as resistance. And then price again came back to that same area as resistance, smashed up through, tried to use it as support, but then collapsed. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if price comes back to that same area and then turns back around and starts the real sell off. Okay, that's kind of my sort of uh, big you know, potential for a longer bear market um, that I see is that I don't think that, you know, this was a corrective move. I think this is potentially the start of a, a larger, you know, correction and um, maybe an extended bear market, if you will if we use this as resistance and start selling off, okay? If we kind of just go up and just blast through this, then I mean, you know, we're probably gonna go to newer highs this year, right? Which would be 10.5, 10 10.7, maybe 11,000. But I mean, until then, you know, uh, you, have to, you have to look at this as, you know, key support and resistance levels that are at play, okay? So you have a couple levels to look forward to, right? You have that $9,100 area to about 92.50. You have this, you know, $95, $9,600 base right here before we sold off down here. Um, you have that 200 EMA, which is currently around uh, basically where we are right now, which is $9,100. Um, the pivot right now is around $9,200 or so, I guess. Yeah, $9,180. Okay, that's really where the pivot is, which again coincides with our uh, one hour, you know, key SR level in this area. Right. So more often than not, folks, if you do understand technicals properly and you actually map them out properly, all all of the uh, confluences will typically lead you to, you know, um, 
fairly close to the same price action or the, the same markers. Okay. It's never that, you know, one will give you a marker that's $300 away and another one will tell you that we're, you know, um, I guess like $200 away or whatever, right? It, it's oftentimes, you know, you'll see confluence of multiple things telling you that, hey, maybe, um, maybe it looks like, you know, this particular area is showing us key resistance and then other things are showing you confluence with that. And I didn't show you the VPVR, so even this particular case, right? Um, you can see the volume profile is also showing you that there's some high volume nodes that are in our way right around this $94, $9,500 area. Okay. I guess this one's around $93, $40 or so. Okay. And that was based on the four hour, right? If we start going back to the daily, you know, you could see, okay, currently we just got through that $8,700 uh, $8, area, that high volume node. The next big high volume node is right there around $93, $9,400. Okay, so very possible that, you know, price could get all the way up into that area and then start selling off. Okay. Um, also, right here around uh, 8532, that is the March and weekly open. So March monthly open and then the current weekly open. So, you know, once you're typically sitting above these weekly and monthly opens, uh, you typically have, you know, maybe a good one, two weeks um, in price action to, to push in the other direction and then maybe it resumes back down. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking that, you know, if we start, if we start um, closing out these areas right here, let me show you guys over here on this chart. If we start going past these areas and start closing out these short positions, I'm fairly certain we should go higher. This is why I'm saying that if the bears really want to hold their strength, they kind of defend this area with all their strength. You know, they, they do whatever it takes to not allow price to come anywhere near this area. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, let's see how the uh, commitment of traders reports go. Uh, so this is still from last week. I think we should see an update maybe today or tomorrow um, with the new updated data. So, so far, I mean, as per last week, you could see leverage money, asset managers and dealers are net short, meaning, for Bitcoin right now, a majority of their positions, they're believing that, you know, prices potentially still have more downside, right? Because they are shorting for a reason. And these are the real smart players, professionals in the market, you know? So if they know that they need to go net short, that means they know something that you don't. And more often than not, they're right. And most retailers are not, okay? Um, as per exo charts, all right? Uh, what we're seeing on the daily time frame is a bit of a positive movement, right? We see a good base forming here on the daily time frame. Okay, uh, we see that negative delta decrease from 92 million to 4.3 million, and then obviously we had a big push up of the uh, positive candle. Currently sitting at 212 million positive delta, it's a very positive sign. And then also open interest increasing with it, meaning uh, it seems like. Uh, more longs are coming into the uh, order flow right here. So again, it looks like all things are, you know, looking positive for more upside. Um, but remember that we're coming into a key 9,100, $9,200 area where bears are going to try to defend their positions. Okay. Um, let me see here. Let's see on the one hour. Okay. So on the one hour, you could see, you know, price moving up. Um, um, OI going down, right? So that typically signifies, it looks like uh, there is some longs closing out. So you can click over here and you can see what that means, right? So when price goes up and OI goes up, that's new longs, right? But when price goes up and OI uh, goes down, that's short covering, okay? So meaning that it looks like as price is pushing up, shorts are closing out their position or rather getting closed out. So again, you know, maybe more fuel to the fire of, you know, price pushing up higher. Okay. And you want to kind of see this uh, positive delta just keep increasing right here. You know, uh, cumulative volume delta right here has been constantly going up. So this is a positive sign. CVD is basically folks, um, you know, uh, one day added on to, or one hour, one candle added on to the previous. So for example, if, the volume, the, the delta for this candle right here is 69 million, 
right? And the volume for this delta was 8.8 .8 million. You just add these two together and then you get CBD, which is cumulative volume delta. The reason this one is important is because you could see overall the trajectory of the overall cumulative volume delta, whether it's going up like this, meaning in numbers, you could see 72 million, 129 million, 105, 110, 118, and then it goes all the way to 214 million and 210. So this is a positive sign in terms of price action so far, right? But remember, you know, as per technicals, we're still approaching resistance, okay? Uh, but yeah, anyway, folks, I hope you guys enjoy this analysis. Do come join CryptoSomniac or click the Discord link below and come hang out with us in the free side. Um, we also have, you know, an equities analyst who does a ton of uh, analysis for the uh, broader markets. He shows you updates every single day. And actually, you know, you can even see some uh, links between traditional markets and crypto as of late, because obviously all macro markets across the board got sold off, you know, last week, right? Even Bitcoin got hit, uh, gold got hit, equities got hit. So you could see that, you know, there's, there's maybe some bigger picture at play that we need to understand about traditional markets that, you know, could give us a better understanding about crypto. Because remember, at the end of the day, Bitcoin and crypto is still a very speculative asset. Speculative assets are the first ones to get sold off in times of, um, in, in tough times, okay? So don't think that Bitcoin is some safe haven and once stock market goes down, Bitcoin has to go up. Not the case at all. Bitcoin has not established itself uh, as, a, as a big player, you know, as a, you know, traditional asset where people like to park their money in. Okay. So be careful when people tell you that, Hey, Bitcoin is, you know, negatively correlated to the stock market or it's some safe haven or, you know, you know some bull crap like that. Okay. It's not the case at all. All right. Um, but I think that's pretty much it folks. I think I went over everything. Um, you know, volume is increasing on the four hours, so very positive sign. Uh, one thing I do want to see is I want to see this volume um, get up higher by the end of the day, okay? Uh, this is something that kind of, this is something that kind of scares me is that volume overall is going down and price is going up. Um, I don't know. I, I don't typically like that um, because what that basically says is, you know, there's not enough fuel to kind of, uh, push prices up. They're kind of just being, you know, grinded up slowly and slowly. And when price prices grind up like that on less volume, typically, you know, you'll see pain on the other side too, because people will FOMO into this candle, which looks great, but internally there's, there's some issues, you know, and most people don't look into the internals like we do. All right. Um, let's see here, but yeah, that's, that's it folks. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this analysis. Click the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment on your thoughts um, and come join CryptoSomniac. All right, that's it. Take care and have a good rest of the day.